congenital adrenal hyperplasia a cortisol deficient syndrome let's see the site of pathology first as we know adrenals are two small organs placed over kidneys as we take a cross section we can see the two main parts medulla and the cortex medulla secretes neurotransmitter hormone that is adrenaline whereas cortex is subdivided into zona glomerulosa for aldosterone zona fascicularis for cortisol and zona reticularis which secretes the sex hormones such as testosterone and the estrogen both in males and females let's see why the name hyperplasia is given here as we know pituitary sends growth signals to adrenal gland as acth and in response adrenal secretes cortisols which gives a negative feedback and thus the level of cortisol is maintained but if cortisol level is low then pituitary senses and secretes more acth which stimulates adrenal cortex to secrete more cortisol but due to congenital problem involving crucial enzyme deficiencies the adrenal fails to produce cortisol hence in response pituitary secrete more and more acth which causes adrenal gland growth hence resulting in hyperplasia till now we have seen as why we call it as cah let's now look into types clinical features and the enzyme deficient in it but let's first remember some biochemistry let's understand the basic of adrenal hormone synthesis which most of us has either forgotten or never studied in biochemistry here is the simplified flow chart of steroid hormone synthesis this is indeed the simplest chart in cholesterol biochemistry it is very important for us to understand it hence please get yourself supercharged before proceeding further and i assure you if you understand this chart nothing will be difficult in this topic ever let's start cholesterol major ingredient for steroid hormone synthesis cholesterol forms progesterone which is the starting point of other compounds progesterone with the help of enzyme 21 hydroxylase forms deoxycorticosterone which later forms the aldosterone with the help of 11 beta hydroxylase with the help of 17 alpha hydroxylase progesterone forms 17 hydroxy progesterone which follows similar path like aldosterone to form cortisol as shown here this 17 hydroxy progesterone also helps in formation of androgens that is the testosterone thus just three enzymes are needed to be remembered and the whole story is easy to understand now let's see what are the types of cah as we talked about the synthesis of steroid hormones hence the type of cah are with respect to these enzymes deficiencies occurring in the pathways 21 hydroxylase deficiency which is the most common cause of cah second 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency which is the second most common cause third 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency fourth 3 beta hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase deficiency and the fifth is aldosterone synthesis deficiency now let's take first three one by one as we know 21 hydroxylase plays a important role in synthesis of aldosterone and cortisol synthesis hence there occur deficiency of both whereas since enzyme deficiency the pathway gets directed towards androgen producing Now let's see the clinical outcomes of 21 hydroxylase deficiency since aldosterone is deficient therefore less sodium retention and hence the bp falls causing hypotension and since cortisol level is less hence there occurs drop in blood glucose level as cortisol is one of the major hyperglycemic agent and in females due to increased testosterone level there occurs male like features such as virilism ambiguous genitalia etc also since early closure of epiphyseal growth plate hence bone age is more than chronological age you might be thinking that if all the life sustaining enzymes are itself at stake then how will the baby survive yes 
you are right indeed these babies land up in the emergency with the following typical history as 3 weeks old child male is found to be lethargic shock hypoglycemic increased potassium in the blood and decreased sodium levels but the external genital is normal or in case of girl child typical history of presentation is 3 weeks old female child lethargic in shock hypoglycemic increased potassium in blood and decreased sodium levels and the external genitals are ambiguous now let's consider the second cause of cah the second enzyme that is beta hydroxylase deficiency here the situation is somewhat similar but since the terminal enzyme is deficient hence there is formation of precursor like deoxycorticosterone and deoxycortisol which can partially act like their final products hence the child here is more stable than previously taught but as in previous here too the androgens are increased and hence ambiguous genitals are formed in a girl child now let's note these clinical features down although aldosterone is less but there is normal to increase amount of deoxycorticosterone hence less hypotension and electrolyte imbalance similarly cortisol is less but due to normal to increase in deoxycortisol hence less of hypoglycemia but the testosterone is still high virilism ambiguous external genitalia and bone age more than chronological age are seen now coming to the third cause or the third enzyme deficiency leading to cah 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency as we can see that 17 alpha hydroxylase has a role in cortisol as well as androgen productions hence there occurs shift of the path to aldosterone production let's understand further by considering the clinical features as we know 17 alpha hydroxy is crucial enzyme for testosterone synthesis and cortisol synthesis hence decreased testosterone causes ambiguous genitalia in males decreased cortisol causes less sugar in blood leading to hypoglycemia and also there occurs over production of msh due to common pathway between acth and msh synthesis resulting in hyperpigmentation and increased aldosterone causes sodium water retention leading to hypertension now let's see how we can manage a patient with cah management of cah here we will study the management of the most common cause that is more than 90% of the cases of cah which is 21 hydroxylase deficiency the drug of choice is hydrocortisone which is given lifelong with addition of fludrocortisone which is an aldosterone agonist in case of female child we do genital surgery plus hormonal therapy like flutamide let's see the prevention strategy prevention of ambiguous genitalia development that is in the prenatal treatment in mothers with history of cah in past pregnancy we start dexamethasone as soon as possible that is when the pregnancy is confirmed also do the sex determination since if the male child we can stop dexamethasone after 10 weeks since male genitalia are usually developed by then but if female child continue the dexamethasone up till delivery as the chances exist that the child may develop ambiguous genitals but why dexamethasone or steroid in pregnancy as steroid provides a negative feedback to pituitary and prevent adrenal hyperplasia hence preventing the surge of sex hormones like testosterone etc and other side effects also are prevented with respect to hyperplasia